Hey everyone, in this video I am talking about how to win the featured snippet. So for those of you who don't know what the featured snippet is, it is that featured section at the top of Google before any of the results where Google steals, or I shouldn't say steals, it takes some information from a website and places that information at the top of the search results on Google. The intention for Google is that it wants people to stay on Google and not click through to the website, which is really unfortunate. Um, but we still, all of us still want to win that featured snippet because it features our website essentially at the top of the search results. So here's an example of a featured snippet. So if you type in what is a featured snippet on Google, you'll see that moz.com has got a featured snippet here and it is just a definition of what featured snippets are. Definitions are very common in featured snippets. So there are three types of featured snippets. Well, there are many types, but the three that usually you and I as bloggers are trying to take are short definitions in paragraphs, lists, and tables. I'm calling them snippet bait because essentially you're gonna to try to create these short definitions or lists or tables to try to get Google to take that and put it at the top of Google um, to feature your website. So an example of a paragraph, sn paragraph snippet, this is for the search query how do rabbits say sorry? And you can see this is a bit of an explanation. Rabbits apologize by, and then a brief paragraph explaining it. Rabbitcaretips.com did that. And then Google took that paragraph from rabbitcaretips.com and placed it in the features snippet, putting rabbit care tips at the very top of Google search results. The next one is lists. So if you type in how to write a book, there is a list snippet here where Essentially, Google has taken the list straight from blog.readsy.com and placed it at the top of the Google results. Lists are very common for how-to phrases. And the next one is tables. So Panera Bread Recipes, you can see that fastfoodmenuprices.com created a table and then Google took that table and stuck it at the top of Google results to feature fastfoodmenurecipes.com. Okay, so here are my seven tips on how to win the snippet. The first one, and probably the most important one, is try to copy the structure of the, the current snippet. So if a article is already winning the snippet with a bullet list, it means Google wants to rank a bullet list in the snippet. So you would want to create your own bullet list that is better than the one that's already there. So if it's a list, try to create a list. If it's a paragraph, try to create a paragraph. And if it is a table, try to create a table. One thing that you can also try to do, say if you want to steal the snippet surgical mask causing acne from nm.com, you'll see that it's a paragraph. So you're going to want to create a paragraph yourself. And you can see that some phrases are bolded in the featured snippet. Face mask causing acne mask breakout face. These are terms that Google is showing you. These are the sorts of terms it would want to see if it was going to take your information and place it as a snippet. So you would want to use all of these phrases in your paragraph that you're trying to create as snippet bait. One thing that I would say is you don't have to bold that yourself. I know that there are people out there who say bold a paragraph and then magically Google's going to think that that's the best paragraph because there's bold around it. In, in my opinion, that is that claim has no basis. So until I see evidence for that, uh, I don't think that bolding the text has any impact on whether or not you get the snippet. Having said that, bolding definitions and placing things in bold are the most important things can be very good for user experience. It draws the user's eyes to things. So I'm not against using bold font in a blog post. I just don't think it has any connection to winning the snippet. Um, so even though these are in bold here, Google chose to bold them. Um, so you don't have to bold them yourself in your writing. Okay, second one is write definitions of terms that are 40 to 60 words long. I think it was Ahrefs, might have been Moz, did a study saying that uh, featured snippet paragraphs tend to be 40 to 60 words long. So if you're trying to write a definition, for example, and your def you want your definition to be on the featured snippet, try to make that definition 40 to 60 words long. And you'd want to start it with something like featured snippets are, or if you're you know, defining what is a camera, cameras are, and then finish it up with your definition that is 40 to 60 words long. Okay, next one, create lists directly under a keyword optimized H2. In my opinion, in my experience, just my opinion, you're more likely to win the snippet when your content is directly under, underneath a keyword optimized sentence. 
uh, preferably if it's a heading. So here's an example, how to write a cover letter. You can see that there's in bold again, because this is, this is literally Google showing you, this is why they've selected this as a snippet. Straight above that list is a phrase, when writing a cover letter, you should colon and then the list for how to write a cover letter. So one thing that you could do is you could, if you wanted to steal this snippet, make sure some, you have something like a phrase, how to write a cover letter in five simple steps, colon, and then the steps. I'll usually do it as a H2 header. My H2 header would be how to write a cover letter, and then I'll jump straight into the list to give Google signals that this is where, where you should take the snippet from. Okay, number four, answer the question immediately at the top of the article. I've had a bit of success and I'm, you, winning the snippet's not easy and you're never gonna be 100% successful at doing it. So you just gotta try these different strategies. But one of the strategies that I've used and I've had a little bit of success for is simply moving that snippet bait to the top of the article. So in this example here, uh, say I've just made this up, how to take photos at sunset, a step-by-step -step guide, and you've got your snippet bait down here with the bullet list. If you simply move that snippet bait toward the top of the page, sometimes Google will say, okay, I like that, I'll take that. I don't think there's any sort of evidence behind this. It's just something that you can try because I feel as if I've had a little bit of success, a, a little bit of success. Again, you can see that I've used an H2 header that uses that's keyword optimized straight above the thing that I want Google to be for the snippet. Okay, tables can win snippets. Um, make your table really detailed and ensure the headings discuss features of the thing that you're going to talk about. Before I think around about October 2020, tables were winning snippets like crazy. And I used to, if there was a bullet list in Google, I would still try to create a table because tables were winning the snippet off no matter what the snippet was, whether there was a bullet list or a paragraph, tables were doing so, so good at winning the snippet. Now it seems as if Google's kind of taken the foot off the gas for tables, unfortunately. Um, but some things that you can do here. Stuff them with a ton of details. You can see here we've got the keyword rich H2 before the table again, and then the columns are features, size, price, that sort of thing. Dollar signs here with the actual price, categorizing what the different things are. This, I'm surprised, oh, Panera Bread prices. If if the under this list here, you have the phrase Panera Bread, or bread or something, or yeast even, it would probably be bold here because I would think that that's the sort of thing Google's looking for. So make sure that those um, tables are really rich in details. Okay, number six, structure your headings correctly. Now, sometimes Google will create a list, but it's not from a, a, just a bullet list or a numbered list on your blog post. It's actually a list that they've generated from the headings. So if your H, first H2 is types of computer and you have got a, so the H2 types of computer and then your H3 is number one, PC, number two, Mac, number three, I don't know, laptop, Chromebook, etc. And all of those numbers are in the H3s. Sometimes it'll just steal that H2 or take that H2 and all of the H3s and create it into a list. So this is a correct format in which you could do it. H2 followed by H3, followed by H4, back to H3. H2, H3, H2. This is a way that's not really good. H2 with the keyword, and then it jumps to an H4, and then back to an H3. Try to make sure it's structured into an, a hierarchy, because that seems to be the thing that Google is most likely to take. Again, in my experience, none of this is scientific evidence. Okay, next one, use professional niche specific language. This is a really effective one. So for example, Aerobic exercise might do better at winning the snippet than just using the phrase exercise. Horsepower might be really useful to phrase to use in the power niches tool, uh, power tools niche. Aperture for the cameras niche. So using these phrases that kind of develop a little bit of expertise for you, it seems as if Google likes to use those phrases and bolts them in the snippet. So an example here is what are the symptoms of Lyme disease? You can see here it's bolded arrhythmia, migraines, it's bolded rash, fatigue, lymph nodes, that sort of thing, because they're sort of niche specific terms that Google says, well, this person obviously knows what they're talking about because they're using this professional language. I'm gonna stick that to the top of the list. Here's another example. How fast do trains go? KMPH, kilometers per hour and miles per hour. You can see that they're in bold 
Google has decided that this person clearly knows what they're talking about because they're using these metrics that are linked to speed. Uh, that you can see they've also bolded passenger here, which they might see that trains and passengers are semantically associated terms. So this person has used those phrases to make them more likely to win the snippet. Okay, number eight, uh, bonus one, uh, use the minus URL search operator to see where you sit in the snippet hierarchy. So if you're trying to sit, steal the snippet and you haven't got the snippet yet, use minus then the url.com of the person who's currently on the snippet to see whether or not Google would take you as the second best option. Then you can request re-indexing on Google Search Console and then again, see where you sit in the hierarchy. So here's an example. What are symptoms of Lyme disease? Currently, Canada.ca is ranking number one. Obviously, it's because I'm in Canada. Um, if you write minus Canada.ca and do the search term again with the minus there, Canada.ca has disappeared from the search results. Now WebMD.com is number one. You can do that over and over again. So now I've subtracted Canada.ca and WebMD.com and Healthline is now number one. You can do this and you can sort of make a change, re-index, come back the next day and see whether or not you've moved up the hierarchy uh, and slowly but surely do you know, try out different strategies and you might be able to move slowly up that hierarchy until you are number one on the snippet. Okay, so they're my seven, eight tips on how to win the snippet. It is not easy to win the snippet. Uh, I often, I'll often give up. I'll try 30 different strategies and go, well, it's, it's too much of my time to win the snippet for this keyword. Um, I'll move on to the next one and see if I can win it. They're just eight strategies that I use. Other people may have better strategies, but if you're trying to win the featured snippet, try those eight strategies and see if they can help you move further up until you are the one who has got the featured snippet. Sometimes the featured snippet can be awesome because it can dramatically increase your revenue. In fact, last year, I lost the featured snippet for a very high value keyword and my revenue dropped by over $1,000 per month. Uh, because I lost the featured snippet. That's how valuable the featured snippet can be. Um, so it's really worth your time trying to optimize for the snippet as much as possible. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. If you've got any questions about the featured snippet, leave them below and I'll see if I can answer for you.